Dr. Peter Landless joins us this morning to share an important health tip. Plus, Pastor Mark Finley joins us to share an encouraging devotional to kick off our weekend. We also have music. Join us this morning on Wake Up With Hope to be inspired. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. You know, we can't wait to kick off today's program. It's a lovely Friday morning here and it's also National Care for the Kids Day. You know, kids are everything, aren't they? And yet, unfortunately, so many kids in the world experience dramatic events and don't have a lovely childhood. You know, a person's childhood environment has a lot to do mm -hmm. with what they become or what we become as adults. Mm -hmm. This is so true, but friends, we can make a difference. We can seek to improve the environment of our children in our lives by taking positive steps to care for them. And you can take part in celebrating this day by donating to a children's hospital, uh, funding a child's education, giving to charity, or being more hands-on with the children in our own sphere of influence. Also remembering to draw them to Jesus. After all, Jesus did say, let the little children come to me. He longs to heal and bless them. Indeed, He does. Well, we have a lot to share with you today, but first, let's take a look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history, in 1963, President John F. Kennedy proposed a collaborative moon mission between the Soviet Union and the United States, surprising both nations. After winning the 1961 space race, Pledged to land a man on the moon, Kennedy suggested that the mission could be a joint effort. By 1963, U.S.-Soviet relations had improved significantly with key agreements like the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Kennedy, speaking at the United Nations, questioned why the moon mission should remain a competition and emphasize the potential for cooperative achievements between the two superpowers. While well, this moment highlights the importance of learning to work together, we can also take a moment to be reminded that certain principles in our lives must remain distinct and unyielding. You know, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 mentions, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. When we follow Jesus, our faith calls us to make clear choices and remain devoted to God alone. So friends, is there any area in your life where you're struggling with compromise? Well, today we want to encourage you to make a commitment to stand strong for God. Let your faith in Him be unwavering as you resolve to remain steadfast in your dedication to God's principles, asking Him to fully align your heart and mind with His will. Mm. Amen. Well, friends, right now, Dr. Peter Landless joins us as he shares on the importance of knowing your numbers on today's segment of The Health Connection. It's time for The Health Connection. My health connection with your health and your health connection with your own. Let's talk about the health connection between your holistic well-being and when we use the term holistic, we mean body, mind, spirit, social and emotional health. All of them together. What is the relationship between holistic health and numbers? Why would we talk about numbers in this kind of segment? Well, despite all the advances in medical and health science, heart disease is still the leading cause of death worldwide. If one includes vascular disease in general, and strokes in particular, these numbers are even more concerning, over 19 million deaths every year. You may be a young person, shrug your shoulders and say, that doesn't affect me, but it does. The changes in the blood vessels, especially the arteries, large and small, start very early in life. They're affected by our genetics, hereditary, high blood pressure, diet, activity or lack of it, stress, diabetes, the environment including smoking and alcohol and other drug use, they all affect and promote the occurrence of vascular disease. 
So what are the numbers we are talking about? Well, let's go to number one. What is my weight? My body mass index? What is yours? Do you know what your weight is? Sometimes we just don't want to know what our weight is. And yet there are always people who will tell us what it is, perhaps. What is your blood pressure? Is it within normal limits? When did you last have it checked? Cholesterol levels. We're living in an age and a time when junk food is around all, all around us. What is your cholesterol? Your blood sugar level. With all the refined foods that are being consumed so readily today. Then, how much tobacco is used? Zero would be what it should be. Nothing. And of course the question, how much alcohol? How many ounces? How many milliliters? The answer would best be zero. And that answer has emerged with science confirming that there is no safe level of alcohol intake, despite many articles and many conversations which in the past and until recently have stated that there is a benefit to alcohol use. Daily exercise. Are you doing it seven days a week? If you're doing it one day a week, it's better than no days a week, but seven days a week, best. So you may be saying, wow, is there anything left to enjoy? Oh yes, there is. A full and healthy life. We're wonderfully created and despite our brokenness, that life is ours for the living. What can you do to modify your risk of heart and cardiovascular disease? Well, here the numbers come right back. Know your numbers. Know what your blood pressure is. And we're not giving all the normal values, but you need to see your healthcare provider and ensure that you have a normal blood pressure, a normal blood sugar. And here's another challenge, and it's been shown that people who weigh themselves daily and know what their weight is doing have easier control of their weight and also are much more conscious of the rest of their health activities. Avoid tobacco, avoid alcohol, and avoid other so-called recreational drugs. Have an annual physical and cholesterol check. Make the appointment and get that physical exam you've been putting off till next month or even that you've said, I'll do it next year. Be intentional. I take courage from Paul's words in Philippians. He reiterates, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Make the connection with him and wake up each day with new hope and renewed vitality. Are you enjoying today's program? Then don't forget to share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more. And search for us on YouTube to check out our YouTube channel and keep up with us there. When we return, we will have music. And coming up later, Pastor Mark Finley joins us to share today's Steve Orson Thought. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's a lovely morning on Wake Up With Hope. We're enjoying our time with you. Right now, it's time for one of our favorite parts of this program, music. Inspiring music is always such a blessing and that is why we want to share music with you this morning.
We have to take a short break, friends, but stay with us. After the break, we'll have today's devotional thought by Pastor Mark Finley. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for being here this morning. It's now time for a devotional thought by Pastor Mark Finley. Have you ever met somebody that was so humble they were proud of their humility? I read a story once about an old preacher. He talked about this young man. And this young man thought he was the greatest preacher ever, you know. And the young man goes up into the pulpit very uh, proud, very uh, arrogant. He begins to preach, but something happens. He loses his place in his notes, can't find where he is. He stumbles through the sermon, stutters. He's embarrassed. He walks down with his head down. The old preacher says, son, if you would have gone up as you came down. You would have come down as you went up. In other words, if you went up with a very humble attitude, depending on God totally, you would have come down satisfied that God had spoken through you. The book of Proverbs tells us the story of the, of the importance of humility in our lives. So we need to look at what is humility and why is humility such an important grace. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12, before the destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, but before honor is humility. Why is pride so destructive and what is humility? Pride indicates a lack of trust in God. It's exalting self above God. Pride trusts in the fallen human nature. It uh, trusts in its own abilities. Do you remember the story told in Scripture of Lucifer and his pride? That story is found in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14. And Scripture says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Now notice, Lucifer has eye problems. He needs a divine optometrist. I will ascend into heaven. Five times I have used. Wasn't he already in heaven? Yes, he wanted a higher place. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Didn't he have a throne? Yes, but he wasn't content. He wanted a higher position. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation in the farthest sides of the north. What does it mean that Lucifer would sit in the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north? Mount Sinai was to the north. That's where the love of God was administered. So Lu Lucifer did not want to obey. He wanted to be the one who gave the law. It says, I'll ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So Lucifer wanted God's power, but not his character. Pride is so destructive because it substitutes human reasoning for God's divine truth. It substitutes the abilities of the creature 
far above the power of God, the creator. It substitutes human logic for divine wisdom. Humility is simple dependence on God. James chapter four, verse six declares, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. What is humility? Humility is trusting in God. Humility is recognizing that I can't, but God can, that I don't have the wisdom, but God does. I don't have the strength, but God does. Humility is not weakness, but it's rather humble trust upon God really and enables me to become much stronger. Remember in the Beatitudes how Jesus puts it, Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is rather humble trusting upon God, recognizing that he is the source of my wisdom, the source of my strength. A number of years ago, when I first went to the former Soviet Union, the situation was quite tense, and our leadership team there of the Seventh-day Adventist Church assigned to me a Russian bodyguard by the name of Boris. Now, Boris's story is quite remarkable. Boris always wanted to be part of the KGB, the secret police. His uncle was the guard, was one of the guards of Stalin. And uh, Boris admired his uncle. And so he went to KGB school, Boris did, and he learned uh, uh, psychological warfare. He learned how to detonate bombs and explosives. He learned judo. He learned uh, the art of using weapons. He studied geography, culture, history, language. Boris just it's a brilliant person. And uh, one day he was in a guard tower, the KGB. And as Boris was in this guard tower, it had rained and it was quite slippery. Stepped on a ladder, flipped, went down the staircase and broke his back. He was taken to a special KGB hospital. While in that hospital, he was lying on the bed and he was watching television and he saw some of his KGB unit classmates that had graduated with him now that were operatives and he knew them and he saw them in crowds inciting riots here and there in republics in the Soviet Union that uh, the Soviets wanted to dominate. And so he watched all that and he said, that's not the lifestyle I want. And he began to think, where can I find peace and meaning? And he remembered on one occasion that he had heard a story about Jesus on a mountain giving a sermon. And he remembered some of the words of that sermon and he called it the mountain sermon. Words like, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, blessed are the meek. And very humbly, very submissively, this KGB agent said, Jesus, I need you, give me direction. He sent a letter to what he thought was the Orthodox priest, asking, have you ever heard of the mountain sermon? He didn't know the Sermon on the Mount. Have you ever heard of the mountain sermon? And I'd like to know more about it. And I'd like to know more about this man called Jesus. The letter ended up because churches had their mailboxes similar so they could be controlled, not far from one another, in an Adventist pastor's mailbox. And the Adventist pastor read it. He visited Boris there at the KGB hospital. And he shared with him the principles of the Bible. He shared with him the story of Daniel and how Daniel's humility, Daniel purposed in his heart to serve God and how Daniel in a foreign culture was dependent upon God. He shared with Boris the prophecies of the book of Daniel, the second chapter, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome and the breakup of the Roman Empire and and the coming of Christ. Boris was so incredibly impressed with that that he gave his heart to Jesus, became my bodyguard. When I left Russia during those days, I gave Boris all my graphics, all my slides I was using for sermons. And his story is an amazing one because he becomes a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And as a pastor, he becomes an evangelist and a leader in our church in Russia. 
in various conferences or geographical units of our churches. God blesses the humble. Boris had the humility to seek God and not depend on his own sufficiency or his own brilliance. Wherever you are just now, God invites you to seek him in his word, to humbly come to him and to let him impress your heart, touch your mind and change your life. Thank you so much, Pastor Mark. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. And if you'd like to learn more about our program, maybe rewatch a segment during the weekend or share us with a friend, visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And we look forward to starting the week with you. So don't forget to join us on Monday morning, same time, same place. We'll have an inspiring message from Voice of Prophecy, a recipe from Gia and her team, music from Jamie George, and so much more to get your week started off with the hope and love of Jesus. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought, you would like to learn more, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Again, friends, that's hope.study. We don't want to leave you this morning also without sharing our daily Bible promise. You know, and the Bible promise for your weekend is found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. It says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, Mm. You know, we enjoyed spending time with you here today, and we hope that the content of today's program will carry you through your day with much hope and joy in Christ. Have a blessed weekend. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we're so thankful because you have given us blessings beyond measure. We pray that you would guard our hearts so that nothing will be taken away from us. We want our joy to remain full throughout this day. Our hope is in you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.